Hey guys, to those of you that have already seen a bunch of my Warner Brothers Discovery videos, welcome back. And to those of you visiting for the first time, I'm HJG White, a popular investor from eToro. And Warner Brothers Discovery have just released their Q1 2024 earnings. So I wanted to do an updated analysis of what I think of the stock. So Warner Brothers Discovery just dropped their earnings and they suck. Not only did they suck, I think it's also the first quarter that they didn't release an actual earnings presentation. So let's not sugarcoat anything, let's get into why and how these earnings sucked before getting into any of the positives. Because ultimately we don't care about the good things about the stock already. If you're an investor in Warner Brothers Discovery, you already like the stock, you just want to know what are the issues and how bad are they. Firstly, revenues and earnings are down by around 7%. So the first thing I wanted to investigate is what caused this. Warner Brothers Discovery on their SEC filings break their revenues down into three segments. I actually much prefer the way that Warner Brothers Discovery breaks down their revenues because companies like Apple, who used to break their revenues down into like iPhone and Mac, now break their revenues down into regions like North America, Europe and the rest of the world. So the fact that Warner Brothers Discovery break their revenues down into the product segments make it a lot easier to understand what are the problems affecting its revenues. The three segments we have at Warner Brothers Discovery are studios, networks and D2C, which is direct to consumer. Now, even though the overall business revenues are down 7%, it's the studio's revenues which are down by around 12%. That's film, TV, and even game production. Now, one of the first reasons that Warner Brothers Discovery gives for this reduction in earnings in Q1 is they actually had an exceptional Q1 last year because of the launch of Hogwarts Legacy. While the game that was released this year was Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, which was pretty much a complete flop. Next, as I think I mentioned in my other videos, the inevitable effects of the massive Hollywood Actors Guild strike. Short recap, last year Hollywood had its largest actors strike ever over AI and pay. This paused all film and TV production across the entire industry, and cynical people are out there saying that they did this all to pay off billions of debt. Anyway, let's move on to a completely different point. Last year, Warner Brothers Discovery paid off $5.4 billion of debt. And pretty much as a result of that, only has $1.7 billion of debt due this year. And in fact, Warner Brothers Discovery in their earnings announced that they'd already paid off $1.1 billion of debt this year and still have $3.4 billion worth of cash remaining. Guys, I want to fix a statement I've made in previous videos. Basically, in past videos, I thought that national debt included interest payments. It doesn't. National debt, the national figure, is the amount that we pay interest on. I got confused because basically I learned about national debt while I was learning about treasury bills and national debt kind of works the opposite when it comes to treasury bills. I'm excited to share all the information I've learned about Warner Brothers Discovery over the last three days since their earnings came out. However, just be aware, I'm telling you now, I am just a retail investor. I became a popular investor from home, working on my laptop, doing research myself, and becoming a value investor over 10 years, but I've never been formally educated in the field. So I'm not a financial advisor, but I have done a lot of research for this video because I myself hold Warner Brothers Discovery shares, and you can even go see that in my Toro portfolio, which Warner Brothers Discovery is about 67%, and you can see my stats and my performance on eToro too. Back to Warner Brothers Discovery, I'm a little bit glad that I didn't make this video a couple of days ago because actually since their earnings, not only have they bought back $1.1 billion worth of debt already, they have announced a tender offer to buy back $2.5 billion worth of debt. Now, Warner Brothers Discovery, when they announced this, actually published what debt they are looking to buy back. There is some debt that they're looking to buy back this year, but a lot of this debt is years into the future. This makes sense because essentially the further into the future debt is, the cheaper you can buy it back for. Or you could look at this in reverse, why are you going to sell the debt back to the borrower today at a discount when you're going to get the full loan back tomorrow? In fact, the vast majority of Warner Brothers Discovery's debt is due beyond five years time. Which interestingly means because of the high interest rate environment that we're currently in, some of the people currently holding our debt are actually losing money right now. Let me put it this way, all of Warner Brothers Discovery's debt is fixed at 4.6% interest. However, some of the people that have lent them money are fixed at 
4% interest. Presumably the person that lent $1.6 billion to Warner Brothers Discovery at a 4% interest rate would love to get this money back right now so that they can invest it into a 10 year treasury bond, the safest money that you can possibly get that is fixed at 4.3%. Now, even though the remainder of Warner Brothers Discovery's debt might be above 4.6% interest rates, these investment banks would probably still likely like to buy this debt back so that they can put it into federal treasury bills. However, let's get back to Warner Brothers Discovery and their declining revenues. As I was saying about the actors' strike, pausing production helped them pay off billions of debt. However, it was going to have an inevitable effect on how many productions there were down the road. I didn't know how much hurt to expect from the actor's strike, but the good news is, it is now over. While I'm not investing more in the business right this minute, you could kind of look at this as the same as investing in Coca-Cola right when they released a new Coke. In fact, it's kind of the oldest investing technique to buy into a fantastic business right after they've made an incredible short-term issue. The key here being that the issue is in fact short-term and has been resolved. I me, mean, that's all the actor strike is, is a pretty big short term hit. The bigger issue for me is the networks. And it's kind of because Warner Brothers Discovery pinned the decline of their network revenue on so many different things. Now, some of this is to be expected because Warner Brothers Discovery publicly dropped regional sports last year. If anything, I support the dropping of regional sports. It's obviously something that's not going to have huge international appeal, isn't going to really help them grow their business internationally, which is the most important thing. And also, as David Zaslav says, sports is the only thing that Warner Brother Discovery rent. I think Zaslav's approach is great. He wants to have sports on the platform because obviously it generates tons of profits, but only if the price is fair. And of course, it's only going to generate profits if you pay the right price for it. And of course, one of the biggest sports contracts that they hold is with the NBA. Now, my God, for such a small part of Warner Brother Discovery's revenue, this took so much research to unpack. The confusing thing is that the NBA contract is held by TNT Sports, which is a subsidiary, again, of Warner Brother Discovery. Honestly, there are far too many unknowns here in order to make any price assumptions as to what this would do to the stock if Warner Brothers Discovery were to lose it or even bid 2.5 billion. First of all, we don't know what NBC had bid for. So what we do know is that Amazon have got pretty much the middle games, the middle games throughout the year. ESPN and ABC, which is owned by Disney, have the games, the finale games at the end of the year. And currently Warner Brothers Discovery are bidding, I believe, for the rights to do after game commentary and for the rights to multiple games, but they might not be the finale ones that ESPN and ABC get. The fact that NBC has offered 2.5 billion suggests that they are going after the same games that ESPN and ABC already broadcast. Essentially, NBC aren't just outbidding Warner Brothers Discovery, they are trying to outbid Disney also. I am interested in the fact that NBC's contract looks like it might potentially be trying to take away games from ESPN and ABC, which is owned by Disney, because that might mean that Disney and Warner Brothers Discovery join up to purchase the NBA. If that happens, that's just another bit of content that can go on their combined streaming platform. On the earnings call, Zaslav is constantly talking about partnering up with Disney. And one of the most compelling reasons he gives for this is the fact that Disney, Disney Plus, has a lot of really good kids content. Hulu does have some good adult content, but Warner Brother Discovery really have the best adult content out there. So not only would this be a platform that has an extraordinary amount of content to rival Netflix, it would also be a platform that has ad tiers. Now, I can hear a lot of people out there crying about this, but to be honest, I'd be quite excited about this because then I could keep my Netflix subscription, which I quite like, I am happy with, and I could watch films like House of Dragon, sorry, series House of Dragon, Game of Thrones, uh, and just suffer through the ads, just so that I'm aware of what's going on in these shows. I do like these shows, but I'm not willing to pay for a subscription, and I hate going to piracy sites. It's also potentially through these ad tiers that a lot of people will realize that this platform actually has more content or better content suited for them. So going back to our sports dilemma, how do we price things like the NBA when doing our valuation? Well, I've got a pretty simple solution. This solution comes from Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, two of the creators of the world's 
greatest hedge fund. Someone asked them, how do you make the best predictions? How are you able to predict the market better than everyone else? Charlie Munger's answer was super simple. They make fewer predictions. So what does that answer from Charlie Munger mean for us Warner Brother Discovery investors in this situation? It means that since we can't predict what will happen with the NBA, we should ignore it. We should assume that the 19 billion that we are paying for Warner Brother Discovery comes without the NBA. Next, we need to think about how Warner Brothers Discovery could possibly fall apart. Yes, we may lose subscribers. In fact, though, we have gained subscribers. We're now at like 99 million subscribers. We are gaining subscribers and we haven't even gotten into Europe and the UK yet. But for Warner Brothers Discovery to truly fall apart, people would need to lose the appetite for Harry Potter, The Lord of the Rings and shows like Friends. Just as an example, Harry Potter makes millions, hundreds of millions every year through licensing merchandise and also through just licensing the films to Netflix every year. And then they release Hogwarts Legacy, which in the last year since it was launched has raised $850 million. As another example, I don't have the numbers for 2024, but in 2019, Warner Brother Discovery licensed Friends to Netflix for $100 million. That's $100 million for one show for one year. Let's put this into numbers. Let's say you buy Warner Brothers Discovery for 19 billion. Now, they have $43 billion in debt, so you can kind of think of this 43 billion as additional 43 billion that you're paying for the business. So that means we're paying roughly 60 billion for 200,000 hours of content. Netflix on market cap alone is priced at 264 billion, while Disney with 40,000 hours of content and tons of debt, but on market cap alone is priced at 190 billion. So yes, their earnings did suck, but let's do two things here. First, let's not base too much on what is typically their worst quarter. Another reason not to read too much into this quarter is even though this quarter was worse than the quarter last year, our trailing 12 months are actually up from this time last year. All this says to me that now is the time to just sit on your hands. But as I said at the beginning of the video, I am 6 to 7% invested in Warner Brothers Discovery. That for me is enough. The thing that I think you really need to do if you want to be rich is...